Hello everyone, welcome to the Capricorn Solar Festival webinar of 2025 initiative Preparing the Way. This webinar is one of the um, monthly programs prepared by within the 2025 initiative, which works in continuing the rhythm started in last year, the rhythm of monthly meditations, which targets to strengthen in the hands of the new group of old servers and uh, preparing the way for the externalization of the hierarchy and reappearance of the Christ, going towards the great date of 2025. Uh, my name is Alexander Ilchuk, and uh, I invite everyone to have a short alignment now before we will start our work today. Align with the soul. Visualize people joining the webinar from around the world, seeing them as sparks of light, joining our circle. We align with the group heart center. Project our alignment to the heart of the hierarchy, the Christ. We visualize the triangle of Shambhala, hum humanity, the hierarchy. And we tune in with the energy of the great being of Capricorn. focus in our group center and we begin our work. So welcome everyone and uh, I want to introduce our guest uh, today, uh, Tuya Robbins. Uh, hi Tuya. Hi to everybody. Hi. Lovely to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to hear your voice and so good to link today with you. I just want to say a few words about you to introduce you. Uh, Tuya is an international teacher of the Ageless Wisdom and of Esoteric Ritual and Drama. She is a president and director of the Northern Light Society and Northern Light Mystery School in Finland, a director and faculty member of the Moria Federation of Esoteric Schools of Meditation. She's a member of the board of directors of the Seven Ray Institute and the University of the Seven Rays. 
She's a co-founder of the Serapis College of Music, Drama and the Ceremonial Arts. Um, she's also uh, founded a Blue Rose Sisterhood, an occult order for women that focuses, uh, the focus of which is to provide understanding of the ceremonial work for the growth of spiritual light, offer guidance upon the path for women and as practical activity for helping children. And it was a long introduction for you too. <laughs> I just want to add to that that you're one of the most loveliest soul I've ever met and I'm really happy I have an honor to know you this life. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say the same. And isn't it so that the, the, uh, they are saying that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Maybe we have to say that the 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 loving soul is in the loving soul of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> Did it make any sense? <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm uh, giving the floor to you now, Tuya, yeah, and just want to say a few more words to our attendees that the way how our webinar is usually structured that uh, the first part of the webinar um, we have presentation uh, it will be about like 30 minutes and then in the second part of, of the webinar we will have an open floor for sharing our impressions our comments and asking questions and uh, that uh, during the f and then the third part it will be meditation guided meditation and uh, during the first part of the webinar, uh, all participants will be muted for technical reasons because as of now we have 52 people on the webinar and so if everyone will be unmuted, it will be a lot of noise. So for technical reasons, everyone is muted now, but everyone will have a chance to speak in the second part of the webinar. So the floor is yours, Tuya, and we can already see your screen. Okay, very good. So once again, hello to everybody. I am here under the full moon from Finland. Um, we have already dark and the full moon is rising. So here I am, I am Tuya, and um, uh, Sasha was asking me to introduce something that uh, from where the presenters are. So I have been preparing for you something. We don't know where is Finland. So I am, I am actually here. So here is Finland, here is Sweden and Norway, Russia and the Europe is here and the rest of you may know. And here is again. So we are rather high because there is the Arctic Circle. Finland is um, having a part of it in the Arctic Circle uh, here we can see. So here is Helsinki, the capital of Finland, and we are very, very near, only half an hour away from Helsinki. And here you see the Arctic Circle, so almost, um, what would I say, two-thirds, uh, I mean one-thirds is over the Arctic Circle, uh, very, very no uh, high north. And a uh, very pecu peculiar thing has happened to us. We should have a lot of snow. We don't have hardly any snow. It has been just raining and raining. And during the Christmas Eve, we had uh, roses flowering in the buds. And now we got a few days ago just a little bit snow that we have it. But it is uh, rising up to 20 minus in Celsius. So those who can understand that knows that it's cold. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. Here is our flag. It is uh, white and and uh, blue, we have the cross, because we are Christian countries, so we have the crosses here uh, in, uh, in the flag of Sweden and Norway and Denmark and Iceland. This is our logo of Pohjolan Valo, and here you see this kind of uh, figure here. That is actually a stone painting, which uh, what you are uh, finding here on, our, on the rock that w our uh, place is built. And um, it's a little bit dim photo, but um, they are considering them very f um, rare because the stone paintings normally are uh, representing 
uh, animals and, and humans, but this is a geometrical, and, it's, and they think that it is somehow rep uh, representing Pleiades. And this is the rock. I didn't find uh, yesterday a uh, bigger photo that you would have uh, some kind of idea, but we had once one old um, Indian person who, um, grandfather, who was telling that wherever is a sacred place, the nature marks them with the cross. And there is this big cross through the whole rock. And the, the, this painting that you saw, it's, it's here somewhere. So, um, as said, um, I am related with the Seven Ray Institute and the University of the Seven Rays, and we have the yearly conference in um, uh, Arizona, Phoenix. So, I am inviting every one of you, please welcome to our conference this uh, spring. And then Moria Federation, which is this kind of uh, international um, educational uh, study um, a university without walls. So every year we are taking uh, people to study with us. There are several, several levels in it, uh, and um, it is very, very demanding studies as well. If you want to go to deeper, in Tibetan uh, Master Twalkul teachings, so I'm welcoming everyone to come. And then about this blue rose, but, um, Sasha already mentioned um, a few years ago, we um, established a women group, which is holding also as you are working until 25. That is also our goal. And what is uh, something that I couldn't stop <laughs> mentioning, that we are going to have a trip to Vesak Valley, the sacred Vesak Valley, during the Vesak time this uh, year. So we will be there. And uh, here is from our temple. I'm going to a little bit show the images, uh, the place that I am talking now. Uh, this place is called the Temple of Silence, and we have eternal flame uh, uh, running, or how you say in English, uh, since 2000. We, we were and they seeing it, it has been a few times, a, a short time off, because the flame has to be renewed according to the old tradition of the Vesta priests. But these are the images. That actually is after the two years ago when we had the inauguration of the Blue Rose Sisterhood. So th this kind of table is that uh, it's a little bit nice at the moment. We are talking and we have the microphone. The room is a little bit. Um, not in order because this is after the, um, the actual thing. And this is our gate to our place. It's, uh, it's on the road which is called Rauhalantia, which means the, the road to a uh, place of peace. So that's why we call our place the castle of peace. You know that everyone lives in the castle. <laughs> so here you see the winter image and this uh, pyramid roof here. Under that is our little temple and this is summer image and I'm just running a little bit that you can have. We have this kind of very uh, very um, not fancy little cottages where we have our um, people, guests and, and our uh, study, uh, study group people when they overnight with us. So our place is dedicated to hierarchy and the work of the great ones for the reappearance as your work too. Uh, this is our um, one uh, pine tree under it we uh, sound the great invocation. We call this pine uh, old. It's uh, I think it is some hundred years old. It does not look so fat as it is, but it is becoming uh, older and older. And so now some images from the temple in different festivals that we have had. Here are photos from Vesak. And <coughs> these, these stones actually are, we were with Michael on the Vesak Valley during the year 2000. So these stones are from there and they are always in our ceremony. 
These are still in different Vesak. This is from Asala Festival. This is from Libra Full Moon and Aquarius Full Moon. Tail Mercy. We have Buddha sitting in the south and the Christ in the west. This is the chair of the Master. Santa Lucia's the day of light. Our independence day ceremonies and we change our setup. This is from winter solstice 2000. Which is taking us to this idea. Yeah, and then we have tradition when we have our Christmas trees. Our guests are doing their own decorations. And our Christmas tree is decorated by uh, self-done decorations. And this is one of the Michael's <laughs> gifts for the tree. And that is one of the Capricorns. So now we actually start to go deeper into Capricorn. And I am sorry, I was um, uh, promising to Sasha then when she, he was asking from me about the uh, title and the ideas and I don't know what got into me. I was just thinking about this Shambhala because I'm so interested about Shambhala and the eternal life and our tradition which is called Kalevala. And I was thinking to put these ideas together and then when I started to do, I must tell you the truth, dear friends, it would not make sense to talk about that now because I have to introduce also the, some of the ideas of Kalevala you would not understand anything. So that's why we were talking with them. Sasha, that maybe we would give, um, if any of you would be interested later on this year or sometimes talking about that subject. But now I was, because I didn't know uh, whom you are or who you are and how much you may have been studying um, astrology. Uh, so I want try to find the midway in that and um, I was thinking that what I have noticed that sometimes people may not realize that these great constellations are behind the zodiac signs and there are like considered that there is um, according to the decanate some influences from uh, some constellations. And that's why I was thinking maybe that would be interesting idea, thinking about how important sign the uh, Capricorn is. It is said that Capricorn is the most mysterious sign of all signs. So we can find the mysteries related to it, which is one of them is uh, the mystery of uh, electricity, mystery of the soul, mystery of the gold, um, mystery of mascara, and um, whatever any other mysteries this sign is full of mysteries and it is really related to to christ how we all become christ uh, the the ones who are walking on earth uh, to serve others to save to bring back the the great teaching that one of the key things in capricorn is really restoration of the mysteries and the great teaching. Here we see the one of the symbols. It is said that uh, the, uh, the symbol itself is not even given to humanity because it is giving so much power and energy. When we think about the earlier sign Sagittarius, um, uh, so here are some symbolism, and this is, uh, as you see, it's Rurik's painting. Um, you, the mountain is one of the symbols for Capricorn and also the goat or the uh, hind uh, which uh, indicates the intuition. So Capricorn will teach us intuition because there is some these mysteries how the soul is taking us under the Saturn. I think that all of us we know that Saturn is the ruler uh, um, in Capricorn in two levels, in the exoteric and esoteric, and then the highest ruler is Venus. So when we uh, start to st look about deeper into these um, three constellations which are related to Capricorn, here you see uh, the head of the goat. But these uh, three constellations are Sakita, 
Delphinus and Aquila. So Sakita is arrow. Delphinus is, as we can see, funny dolphin. And then Aquila, the, the symbol of the spirit, the eagle. And here we can see a little bit of the, uh, of the sky, the st uh, starry sky, and map ourselves. So here we see Aquila. Here it is this kind of like a kite shape. Here we have Dolphinus. And here we have the, uh, oh sorry, Dolphinus is here. A little bit similar, and Sakita is here. Capricorn is here. And this, uh, this again, a little bit how the stars are formulated. So this is Sakita, the arrow, and Dolphinus, and then Aquila, the eagle. And look at that. Here we have arrows. So there are uh, the, the Sakita, and then there is a being, Antinous which is sometimes considered as uh, also these uh, cupidos who are uh, sending the love arrow. So it is about heart what is related to this uh, first decanate. And uh, in, in that we are influenced by the, uh, the normal human love. But the greater thing behind that is about how the heart is opening. Decade says, Master Decade, that uh, the Sakita is not the arrow which is shot by the centaur. So it is not this um, searching mind which is seeking to the heights. We can consider that too, but it is more about that, that how we learn to give from ourselves, how we are humbled, the, uh, the knees are one of the parts of the, uh, the body which are ruled by Capricorn. So we are put on our knees. And in, in this process, how the Sakita really pierces our heart, we learn to know something about the holy life. We learn to uh, be touched by, by the our soul, and in that sense, the Christ. We learn to uh, seek that something is there. We are not only on this physical plane, even though the Capricorn is one of the Earth signs. And Capricorn can be very, very uh, selfish and very ambitious of uh, uh, material things, wanting to be the top of the king of the mountain. But when Sakita really peers and starts to peer, pierce our heart, we start to um, wake up as the living soul. That's why the Capricorn is those great signs of the soul when we really become to grow as a soul. And this is how we go now through these decanates. We can think about how uh, the process goes. Um, when we think two, uh, three last signs, Capricorn, Aquarius, and the Pisces, they are telling about the story of the world server, the world um, uh, savior, and uh, the, the one who becomes, in the end, really, as the, the first the world disciple, sorry, and then the server and then the savior. This whole process go through over and over again. We learn through, uh, through many, many incarnations and we rise up. Our substance is purified. So the Holy Spirit is related to Capricorn as well. And during the Christmas time, you can sense how this kind of holy energy descends because the Sun King will be born always in the winter solstice, in Capricorn. And that's why in the end when the process has been going through, we come out as glorified. The m matter 
or Mar Mary is glorified by the Christ. It starts with the purification and then this transformation, transmutation, transformation, transfiguration, when the whole substance will be changed, it will be higher than it will have the higher frequency and the light will start to shine through the matter and then in the end it will end to that glorification of the matter. But the Christ is related to that whole process because Christ has to be born in the heart. And this piercing the heart is the one of the processes of the first decanate because these uh, higher energies are pouring through that. Here we see one of these images of the glorification uh, of the matter, the, the aspect of the m spirit which is introduced in matter is hired, has been purified from the old patterns and wrong things. Here we ha start to have this dilemma or this tool because we have two horns in Capricorn. We have this two here as well, the Christ and the Antichrist. We are all the time faced by these questions, which is then the truth? How truthful we are within ourselves? How, how we are facing the world? Are we trying to fool when we are uh, the, the, the fine-pointed star is turned upside down. So the heart is very important uh, center in this process. Behold this heart which has loved men so much that it has spared nothing even to exhausting and consuming itself to testify to them its love. Now we will look about Dolphinus, the dolphin, which is jumping out of the water. Uh, this uh, maybe is one of the, one cannot say the most important decanate in, in Capricorn, but um, we can say that uh, it is so much related to the uh, life of disciples what we all need to do, we need to jump out from the matter, from the material world into the spirit, into the spiritual world. We have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, dreams and w desires, what we want to become. But because Neptune is falling in Capricorn, which can mean many, many things. But in one sense, the Neptune, the Poseidon, which is the ruler of the waters, is also very um, temperamentic or reactive. So in Capricorn, one, um, one really has to start to use the esoteric Saturn, how to start to control these emotions, how one is uh, really building the way from the astral level to the mental level. And this is how this wonderful dolphin is going to jump out from its uh, uh, prison. Manu has said, water is born from a transformation of light and from a modification of the water is born the earth. And this sign, even though it is the sign of uh, earth, earthly sign. Capricorn has this enormous thing, the secrets behind it, which is related to the water, the matter, water. And uh, it combines these two. So the symbol, the Capricorn, which have the tail, is telling us about the being who can be in the waters and in the, uh, in the, uh, the concrete ground. We, ye, are born of Aditi from the water. You who are born of the, the earth, hear ye all my call. The Christ, 
uh, who is the symbol of the one who is crossing already the waters, is one of the symbols in that decanate, the one who is walking on the waters. When we think about the Christ in the relationship, the first decanate, we can think about the Christ who has the, the purest heart. But here we have the Christ over the waters. It is said that the Capricorn is the one who crosses the water, the will that conquers death. In that process, which we can relate it now to the second initiation, when the, the, the first uh, Teganate ideas about the opening of the heart is related to the, the uh, birth of Bethlehem, the Christ born in the heart, now we are working further and we are conquering this astral plane and we are walking over the waters of death. It requ requires earth and water to make a living soul, says Moses. So here, this uh, deep, deep symbolism of the dolphin is about that, that what is the living soul? This soul which is jumping constantly with joy out of the, its boundaries and, and turning towards the sun. We have uh, several, if we could talk again deeper because this is so fascinating, you know, there would be thousands of things to say. But this, uh, one of the um, symbols of, or, or incarnations of Vishnu, which is the Neptune or Poseidon, uh, you can think um, him as Matya, which is one of his fish incarnations. And somehow this fish is symbolizing the soul, the living soul which is going against the stream when you think about salmon. The salmon goes against the stream, the river. The, st the river which goes down and uh, runs down, it is like the mass of people and men. But then when we are really touched by the soul and we are becoming the living soul, we are born from the serpent, which is the, oh, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> from the fish or a serpent. There are the similar uh, indicators, but I'm not going to the serpent story now about the fish. We are coming out from the mouth of the fish. Now we still move further because it is uh, already, I'm seeing that it is half past. So here we see Capricorn again, and so there is Dolphinus, and Sakita is somewhere th there maybe, and here we have the Aquila, what we are now talking about. Here you see the better image of the stars of Aquila, and we cannot talk about these um, stars. It would be very uh, interesting to talk. Altair is very important star, Aquila. But Somehow, believe it or not, uh, to this um, symbolism of the eagle is related very much to Jupiter. And um, uh, Jupiter is falling as well in Capricorn. But these falls are telling us how the, the lower life, which are indicated or expressed by the, uh, the Jupiter or Neptune, they are put under control by Saturn and they are making higher. Because in Capricorn, you really need to go on your knees. You, we all will fall in Capricorn in one sense, on our knees. Because the highest teacher, what we can think for the disciples, is Saturn, which is taking all our pride away. In that sense, we all fall in Capricorn, but in humility. Uh, one. Um, I'm having here a note you may experience in net where connection difficulties. Sasha, am I on? Am I heard now? Uh, yes, too, yeah. Or is the... Okay, good. So here we see um, <coughs> Hercules who is fighting with the Hydra. So Scorpio and uh, Capricorn are related so that the Aquila, which is the higher form, the transformed serpent or phoenix bird, 
which is burned in its uh, fire, is rising from the matter to the heights of the spirit. So uh, Capricorn will consummate the work which is starting in Scorpio. And that's why in Capricorn we have all of this serpent symbolism as well. So the, the Kundalini uh, power or the fire, which can be called Shakti, which is related to the Holy Spirit. So all of these um, are in functioning when we are walking on the path of disciples, on the path of redemption, on, on the path of sacredness. We try in Capricorn make everything sacred. So the serpent power, and now when we have Pluto in Capricorn, is extremely important to whole world. Because it is indicating at the same time, Capricorn is the double diamond. So it indicates at the same time the lowest and the heights. So the whole humanity somehow during this the last years of the forerunners, because the, Cap the Pluto goes out of Capricorn, 2024, uh, just in the end of 24. It is like this is preparing our years of the far forerunners and uh, takes all our pride away. So please, every one of us, please us understand. Let us give all our what we can give to this process. Let the Pluto purify us. <coughs> This is Horus, which is uh, telling about this power, how the, the uh, transfiguration energies are pouring and, and transmuting or transfiguring Horus. Here, he is in the uh, human form, but he is becoming the Horus, the hawk, Aquila. And here you see one of the Capricorn symbols, the Makara, the crocodile. What we cannot go deeper into it, even though it is very tempting. Anyway, these, these energies of the serpent will t uh, transmute us, uh, transform and figure us into Aquila, who is rising into the heights of Capricorn. Then, when we have done that, the Saturn is actually put under the rock and the Venus takes over. The Venus, which is the esoteric uh, rule of Capricorn, really works through the disciple and finally initiates the disciple. And the symbol for the disciple is uh, one of the symbols of the Capricorn, the unicorn. The one who, who has lost now the two horns, it has become one. So the, the, the triangle is completed. The highest point has been reached. The fires have been burnt. The lower fires. So the Saturn, which is the great teacher of the disciples, will give the place for the um, Venus, which says uh, uh, the, the supernal light on the mountain top. That uh, is related to the third initiation where Sanat Kumara is the initiator. But even though it is the supernal light, uh, the key words for Capricorn, lost am I in light supernal, and yet on that light I turn my back. And this is something when we really become um, humans who are Christ beings, we turn to words, to the world. Our, our heart is fully opened our heart and mind has merged within, and our hands are the hands which are serving. We are giving ourselves to others. This is the highest story of the Capricorn, the, like the main point, because then we are really living souls on earth. Right, we, well, 
Sasha, I would have few more things, mm. but do you want that we will stop here? <laughs> well, yeah, it's very difficult to stop. Like, it's very kind of like pulling in the, all that information, the, this mysteries that you're sharing. Uh, but time-wise, yeah, I think it would be good to open now the floor to uh, the questions or comments from our audience. There are 63 within this now, and I'm sure uh, many people have something to contribute to this topic before we go to meditation. Um, okay. So, how technically it happens that, as I said, everyone uh, in attendance now are muted, but um, if you want to share, you can raise your hand. Uh, it's uh, You can see on the control panel on your screen there is a uh, button with the hand, called like uh, raise your hand, and if you want to talk, just press that button and uh, I will unmute you and you will be able to talk and there is also a, a possibility for you to write your questions in the question section and if for some reason you can't find that raise your hand uh, button you also can write in the question section please unmute me and I will do that um, but I'm very tempted to use my uh, kind of unmuted state <laughs> and ask my to put my first question to uh, to you too yeah uh, how would you translate this mysteries to the level of our practical life we are now entered uh, just 2014 or like astrologically we will enter 2014 in areas but here we are in between uh, the year 2000, when the symbolic impulse came to mm. earth, and uh, we as disciples been working, been exposed to this energy, will energy of Shambhala since 2000. And I think we did some progress, but still there are a lot of work to be done in right. because in sight for us 2025. So it's kind of a broad question, but can you please share how do you see what is our task, practical task, considering this all these mysteries of Capricorn and these mysteries of initiation, how they related to the new group of all servers and to disciples in terms of practical work to be done for us in the next 12 years? You know, this is the question which fascinates me. My uh, thought about that, many thoughts, some of them, <laughs> of the many, is that now we all are really starting to become to that why we were born. When we think about the time when uh, I'm studying now Pluto and talking via Pluto of this, that when Pluto went into Capricorn, it uh, indicated the states where the initiate the one who is to be initiated is going collectively into the states as the when uh, we think about the butterfly uh, and it goes um, when it is in larval form it goes into the cocoon and the cocoon is what we should study we all are now collectively in huge cocoon in our uh, consciousness that's why we are unable to see we are under neptune at the moment the neptune falls the neptune is now in uh, pisces and if you think about um, capricorn tail it is telling the relationship between the pisces and uh, capricorn so this uh, something is working via these uh, great planets and we we are formed and you the Shambhala energy is about how it is reorganizing everything everything it destroys out its way everything which is not according to the law and uh, if uh, I had one slide where I was uh, putting about the avatar of Capricorn how um, DK tells about how the constellation via the constellation of Capricorn comes this great avatar which is um, uh, walking with us through this uh, journey when the whole humanity grows as the living soul. And uh, this time, like the, the great energy or the Shambhala energy, because the rays, 
rays are uh, one, three, and seven, which are pouring through Capricorn. So now the energy of Shambhala is very much related to the story of the uh, Capricorn as well. That uh, this concretization of the old forms are destroyed, and we see everywhere, you see in your own life. Uh, maybe you are frustrated, maybe you are um, in the stage that you, uh, you want to do something, but you are not sure what. These are the times that we practically have to listen. We, we must meditate. This is fantastic what you are doing every single uh, month that you are gathering together. Go in your own self, deeply within, and question your own soul. Listen what your soul is telling to you what to do. You get these kind of uh, impulses. Oh, that would be great. But what you must do is to obey. We all must now obey these little ripples from the soul. Because this is how the world servers will do their great job, which, which was planned by hierarchy before we were all were born. Some of us have started their work. Some of us are still forming it. The whole, for whole humanity, these are difficult times because we cannot see. But when Pluto is reaching the opposition of Sirius 2015, and then we count three or four years, then starts to be those times that we really, really can see concretely. We humans are so that we somehow we need to see in real be before we believe. But these are the times for us to start to work with these higher energies of uh, Shambhala, and if you have any planets in Capricorn, or if you are born under Capricorn, your moon or your sun or your ascendant, so please work with these energies even more consciously than ever. This is the time for us to become occult disciples, that we can start to learn the, uh, the energies which are pouring, that we are related to cosmos as well, that we understand that these energies are meant for us to build something. And that is what we practically have to do. We have to build the way for the great one who is returning. And it is said that in this big uh, um, uh, gathering, that is going to be in hierarchy tw uh, on 25, Christ will lay out his concrete plan when he is going to reappear on the physical plane. So that's why everything what we do is uh, marked by the Lipika Lords. Everything is experiment. So in that sense, if we would think about the huge evolution of the soul, and it's good to think about when we are under Capricorn, it really does not matter if we are going to stand on our heads this last some years, 10 years. What is that comparing to these thousands of years that we have evolved? And we have gone through all kinds of setbacks and all kinds of things. We have crawled on our knees, as is the crude Capricorn. And we have cried. Now we have only some years left. Hopefully we can all see the year 2025. But all of this, what we are collecting, is meant for hierarchy. And this is what I'm seeing in, in practical sense, that the meditation and listening now really carefully, what is we, uh, expected from us to do, and then do it, being obedient, like good Saturn would say. That was my short answer. <laughs> and did I answer anything what you were asking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely agree with you that it's it definitely feels like the time for which we were born and for which we were meant to work. Yeah. To do our part. Yes. It this is the great time what we are living at the moment. And, and certainly it is 14 years now from the 2000, and uh, Fohat is working, and uh, it, uh, it is said that um, 
when the higher impulse is uh, leaving or starting to move from the higher planes, it takes 14 years to descend on the physical. So we can expect that this year, when the Shambhala energy really hits the, the ground, as we could say, uh, things will happen. And that's why the group is needed to balance all of those imbalances which will rise in humanity. Would there be any other y questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, again, I uh, invite people to raise their hands that we could unmute uh, you. Uh, there are a few comments. Uh, uh, f from Maggie Scobby. Uh, Tuya, thank you so much for your wisdom teachings today. Uh, Regina Belkin says, mm, amazing. Thank, thank you, you Tuya. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, Judy uh, writes, uh, so it's the breaking down of all outworn structures for the purpose of the new group of old servers to recreate, redesign the new structures which humanity will slowly respond to and rebuild as the new group of all service designs. Mm. From this, humanity will create the new age. That's right. The new age, the great dawning new age, what, what is and will be before us or is before us. We all are called for that great work together. There is another comment from Rhonda Still. I heard you speak into those who have their ascendant in Capricorn and the sound of my computer cut out and I couldn't hear what was said. My ascendant is in Capricorn uh, and I have felt more out of sorts over the last year and would love to hear what you said. Thank you. Uh, so, can, can, can you repeat that? Like, uh, the question is like, the... uh, yes, that you were saying that it's uh, for people who have uh, either sun or rising I sign or any right. planet, uh, yes. any planet in Capricorn, it's a time to meditate uh, on the and right. whatever you were and, saying. And be, yeah. and be obedient, really meditate regularly and practice this kind of thing that you uh, turn towards your uh, solar angel, the soul, and really try, uh, ask that and try to listen what the soul is advising you to do and be obedient. What I have noticed, and I'm talking about myself, mostly. Uh, I'm getting uh, easily in meditations uh, some kind of, um, it's like a, the one necklace, the next pearl and next pearl. And um, I'm, uh, I must tr become more obedient to those because this I think is the most challenging to do that on the physical plane. We get these things and they are uh, wonderful things. They don't have to be big things. It is not any world mission, but they are some tiny things which is advancing our lives and which, which would help also the world group, whatever part of the service. But to really continue and do that steadily and, and concretely, practice co concretely or manifest concretely, th these are difficult things. It's much easier to go others and, and ask them to do and organize. But we all need to become now also some kind of leaders, which means that we lead these energies. When you think about Capricorn, it has the first and seventh ray. We have to manifest and direct. We have to be the directors in our own little sailing boat. Is there any other Yes, uh, uh, there is a, a comment from uh, Julianne. Uh, she says that, okay. thank you, it is my birthday today and I have five planets in Capricorn. Oh. I will work oh. my hardest to f fulfill my <laughs> obligations. 
great. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm going to have on 17th. You are two <laughs> days ahead. <laughs> I'm thinking of you then. <laughs> That's great. There is another um, comment from Patricia Bagley. Thank you. It is suspicious that you discuss the waters, Neptune, Pisces, dolphins, especially in light of the uh, Pacific Ocean radiation and the Gulf of Mexico BP oil spill, mm. which need our prayers and meditations for healing and purifying in concert with mm. Gaia. Mm. That is the big issue. And, and uh, certainly, if you think about there is nothing uh, different above than below, and all of the symbols that we see, when our waters are so polluted, it tells about our astral plane uh, as well, how our emotions are polluting. So c we all would need to go to this um, real understanding that it's not only the physical thing that we need to purify. The minute we start to purify this, uh, the we can say the dirty astral, the, c the, s the same way it is going to reflect to the outer. I no. Do we have any? Uh, yeah. Uh, I invite people to uh, speak up, like to that uh, would be good to hear someone uh, sharing uh, on the topic of the Capricorn. If anyone has any impressions and um, on the topic of mysteries of Capricorn, so please raise your hands. And um, yes, meanwhile there are uh, other comment from Rhonda. Thank you for the beautiful reminder that it, it isn't enough to meditate and feel these pearls of wisdom <laughs> coming through us. We must also act mm. based them. Mm. That's right. We have two. We have two raised hands. Uh, one by Nancy, and I can see one by Andrea. Sasha, do you want to just unmute, please? Yes, please, Amir, please. Andrea, you're un unmuted. Please go ahead. Uh, somehow, Andrea muted. Uh, you muted. Oh, okay, now you're good. Okay, uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank you for the um, symbol of the the uh, the chrysalis of the butterfly with um, with uh, you said Pluto going into Capricorn and. That just I having observed that with my children and in my life, it was an, a sort of an aha moment and um, gave me a, a greater understanding. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. There is a, uh, okay, and uh, I will unmute Nancy. Oh, okay. Hello. Thank you, Sasha. Hello. <laughs> Tuya, I wanted to thank you so much for for doing what, the pre what an earlier caller said, which is to remind people that it's not enough to read and study the books, that this is about living the life of discipleship. And I so appreciated the way in which you wove that message into all the symbols and, and mysteries of Capricorn. Um, so often <clears throat> there's a temptation to get lost in those, but I, I so appreciate the way you brought it together and created a sense of the path with the three decanates of Capricorn. And I just wanted you to know that that's something that other people, the livingness of the of the discipleship path, is some is an issue that uh, several other people are focusing on as well, and I think it's probably the most important issue of our times if we're going to fulfill our role. So um, right. I really just thank you very very much, and I'm so happy to hear your voice and and know something about who you are. 
that's all I wanted to thank, say. Thank you so much. This this about uh, living. Uh, I think that the, all of the, our years and how the energy is working through us, it is hard for us because we cannot build how the we cannot see how these little devas are building. So we all came forth, but now this. Uh, later years of the forerunners, something will be manifested really through us. And I think that even though we can think about the, the, like the 80s, uh, 70s, the hippie movement and the 80s and the spiritual movements that they have started, but it is still in the baby step. We, we need to move much more stronger sense together and manifest much more stronger sense. And I am pretty sure that this kind of resistance will rise as well because it is Pluto and, in, and because Capricorn is the sign of initiation. So that's why this lower part has to rise. And it is related to that mystery of the uh, five and 10, which is about the beast and the unicorn which are uh, like the Leo and the Capricorn, we need to kill the lower beast. And it can come in what all kinds of ways and manifest in all kinds of ways. We may not even have been seeing that yet. I am just looking the year 2015 when Pluto is going to oppose Sirius. So how this is uh, going to manifest, that's we, uh, why we need all the workers of light to stand together, because in inner planes there are huge fights or the war is going on. And we can, we can sense it, we can see how the humanity is reacting, and humanity has never responded to Shambhala energies well. It has always responded with the, with the war. Now there have been, uh, there are thousands of disciples and our job, one part of that job is to uh, try to keep this um, waving and, and reactive humanity in balanced way that we can th go through these uh, energies of nearing Christ because that is why these are happening because Christ is nearing with his um, uh, masters and angels and they are close. That's why it, it affects as well, the physical, on physical plane as, as well, the Shambhala energy now really starts to work. And that's why, you know, you have been seeing groups who were standing strongly and people were dividing. It is about the Shambhala energy, how we are responding these different frequencies. And we just must um, trust that we just have to give fully ourselves and we trust that that, that this uh, what is going on is putting us in correct place and let us do our best in that place sorry <laughs> was that too long <laughs> it, <laughs> there, there, there is comment from jo jo josette um, on that like I feel difficult to p keep peace and serenity with the idea that we have only some years more. It's a big pressure. Mm -hmm. How can we stay steady in the light and be efficient? Very good question. That's the whole dilemma of discipleship. First of all, it's very good that you are not feeling <laughs> any steadiness because that is the sign of growth. When we have growth anywhere, it is always pain as well. But how we have to learn it is working with our center, the inner, inner center. When we have those turmoils around us, they are good rehearsal places. That's why, let us not be, um, what's the word, disappointed or, or distressed because these are still the rehearsing years. If we would be ready, well, it would be very good, of course, but still we can say the words of comfort that uh, because this is still the process, we are still moving, we are still gaining, we still have years ahead. My, my very wise um, uh, grandma said that 
you have time to the last second. So, and when we think about Saturn is the ruler of time, so there is this time issues uh, in uh, the whole process for humanity because of Pluto. Pluto is, by the way, related by Egyptians to Sirius. And because the Syrian energies are the ones that we have to learn to work with as well, and the whole disciple, disciples, the group of disciples. So these are affecting too. But still, we have always time to the last second. Until the last second, we have hope. So we still have many, many years in relationship to human life. To uh, how many years it is now? Uh, is it twelve years? Of twelve or years or and <laughs> twelve years and hundred forty-four full moons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. So it is still a long thing for human being. And, and one can make a huge thing to oneself when one starts to take these uh, very, very um, uh, demanding steps. You just demand from yourself, make a plan for yourself. We, uh, one can change the whole, whole one's course, inner course uh, the, of the bad habits to the best habits. There is a raised question, uh, hand from Maria Cristina Amaral from Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. Maria Cristina, yes, you can uh, talk. I just uh, would like to say that because we have 144 full moons, uh, Tuya can be invited many times again to, to be with us. <laughs> 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 you are funny. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> right. I, was, I was thinking if you could say something about uh, the relation between Pluto and Venus and Sirius. So you mentioned something, but uh, you can wow. say something more. Right. You know, it is this, this whole relationship about the Sirius and Pluto and Venus, that is something what uh, the Egyptians went very deep. And it is about uh, the technical steps. They have technical steps how one is um, changing the, the matter within oneself. The Pluto, which is Anubis Dok, is the best leader through the darkness. So the, uh, the Dok is related to the sense of uh, smell. And when we are and it's the highest sense in occult um, knowledge. So the highest sense, which is smell, we have to smell our way to the goal. We, we all are going to be put into the darkness. And that relationship in ourselves with Venus, the energies of the Venus, which is touching first the Earth. Earth and Venus are the twin sisters. So uh, for us, it would be, uh, would be good to become in that sense occult, that you would take your chart and you would look where is the Venus situated in your chart and the Pluto, where it is related. And do they have any connection in that chart? You have to be intuitive and look. You don't have to know astrology technically in that sense, but you intuitively look of this en uh, energetic field, which means the houses, where you are actually working with these energies. And Sirius is transforming through, through these planets. But the, of course, you know, the, this is a so big issue again that it is the whole uh, whole um, left the, the title of the lecture or the, the time of the lecture and I should have uh, some images and, and uh, to show you what, what do I really mean but it is something very very important thank you Tuya. thank you you could keep on talking 
Uh, okay, talking. Uh, you know, <laughs> there is something what I wa not talking. What is hearing, so. I mean. <laughs> you know that the, when we think about the Pluto, you can think about the Pluto experience in that sense when you, when again we think about the life of Christ, because life, the Christ is for all of us a model of the being who has transformed, transfigured himself. He is the highest example of a human being. But Christ as well, when we study about his initiations, and, and we study at the same time how, the, how Jesus was going here on earth, but Christ in inner planes, and then came the experience of Ketchaman, where Christ is on his knees, and he is in the depth of the darkness where he is not knowing what he should be choosing. On the outer plane, the, um, the army uh, directed with Judas is coming and nearing, killing him. In inner plane, the, the, this being has to make a decision. The Christ went the sixth initiation in inner planes when the uh, when Jesus went through the fourth. So in that great moment, the angel of Capricorn descends. So let me just read this because it is so important. And this is a, a kind of meditation as well. Capricorn, this constellation stands for the influence which will carry the will of Shambhala to the hierarchy or to the world initiates, giving to them that dynamic and enterprising spirit which will enable them to carry forward to completion the will of God on earth. It was the angel born under Capricorn which came to Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane and fused his individual will into the divine will and thus enabled him to carry out his mission to completion. This was not only the revelation of divine love to the world, but as the legend in the Master's archives goes on, he came to fabricate the gossamer thread which bound the two together and linked the place of the Most High, Shambhala, with the holy city, the hierarchy. The bridge between the holy place and the holy of holies was securely anchored. The will of God could now be carried to fruition. It means for us this time of the Pluto in Capricorn and the depth of the initiation that we all will be now awakened. Meditate on that, that you stand beside the Christ, that now we as humanity will carry out. During 2000 years ago, the humanity was sleeping, which was indicated by the sleeping disciples. But let us now stand together, hand in hand, awakened with him, because humanity faces deep things in coming years. I think yes, we, Sasha. we now can to go to meditation. <laughs> it was a perfectly into meditation. Right. So um, I am going to change these uh, ideas because of the timing. But let us all just close our eyes. I go through some slides into the a better slide. So let us close our eyes. And now you can see one image. Imagine that the great angel is behind you. Imagine you are standing around the Christ. And as Christ was so successful, 
2,000 years ago. Really, everything is based upon this success. Let us be very, very aware of that. Whatever we all are doing at the moment is based upon the success of these two great beings, Jesus and the Christ, their co-work, and that that the Christ gave up. The angel of Capricorn behind him or beside the Christ in that time strengthened him and combined these two will, the individual and the higher will, within yourself. Say the same way. Let thy will be done. And thy will be done. Thy will be done. And because the Capricorn directs us to, to become the real living souls, as the living soul sense the echo through the spheres, the space, what it did when we all said, let thy will be done. We manifest the mystery of the soul in higher sense. As this connection 2,000 years ago between Shambhala and hierarchy was made, seeing yourself standing around the Christ, him in the center. Let us open the connection from humanity the same way as the connection between Shambhala and hierarchy was established. Within our minds, using our collective will, we open the way, the higher way to hierarchy. That is what Capricorn rules. And as the living soul is connected, to all other souls, sense the movement of the initiates. Sense the movement of the disciples, moving towards that great point that we can see, 2025. We all called to work together. We have called to restore the mysteries.
one part of the mystery. In one sense, we can think about what is the unicorn, the initiate, who can vision, who can see and envision, no matter if we are not yet those initiates, we can act as if and throw into the future an image of restored mysteries and how the whole planet is functioning accordingly directed by the divine will. Let us visualize the mountain top. This mountain is the symbol for many ideas. One of the idea is the abode of the greatest one, the king of kings. It is also the symbol of the work the karma that we all start to climb. On that mountain top, Venus, the highest ruler of Capricorn, appears as a supernal light. Feel how you are showered by this enormous supernal light. And say the key words within, lost am I in light supernal, yet that light I turn my back. And you look towards to the world and the best in you looks with eyes of compassion and love. And within your heart you know you came forth to serve. Even though the tears may fall here and there, We came to serve, and we came to pre the, prepare the way. The one who is coming for the one whom so many nations are waiting for. And this year, 
in Buddhist and Tibetan tradition is called the year of the horse. It is telling mysteriously that this year is meant for the pilgrimage to go to the holy mountains in order to gain the message from the highest. This year, practice that. Go imaginatively or concretely to the holy mountains and let the wind horse come and tell you the secrets of the soul. Come and tell you what you need to know for your next step. And be aware, this year is the year of Shambhala. Listen, what the greatest king will send forth. Soul will hear, let us, all of us too hear. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light streaming forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. And let us sound three times silent all. Let us remember all sun gods are born in Capricorn. So thank you, my friends. It was wonderful to be invited. Thank you so much, Sasha and your group. I wish you all the best for this coming years. Blessings to your great, great work. Thank you, Tuya. Thank you for taking us to this mountain today. Thank you. And reminding us that we all, together as a group, approaching this mountain top. Mm. And I know it's it's good to know that so many of us in this work, and so know it's so good to know that 
you and Michael are there and we are actually not separated we are all together in the same circle right that's true this is wonderful life <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Even though it is sometimes a little bit hard, but it's wonderful life anyway. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. Mm. That's Saturn and that's Pluto. Right. And that's our blessings that we have them. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you thank everyone you. today on the call. And uh, have a wonderful meditation during this sacred time of the solar festival and let's stay connected this day and days and during the entire month till the next solar festival mm -hmm. in Aquarius we're still working on the program for the next webinar but this year will be a very intense year of work for 2025 initiative and the coordination group is working on setting up the program for the year and uh, thank you to you for reminding us that it's it's a year of shambhala and it's right. a year of intense work for all of us it is i am capricorn sun and i like this <laughs> everybody says it's a hard working year good luck <laughs> 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 and uh, yes, it's only, uh, is it only eight hours that uh, we are going to have a full moon moment? Something like that anyway. It's it's pretty soon. The yes. Moon. And actually, mm -hmm. maybe if you have handy the link for the webinar uh, that you will and Mike will lead soon with Moria Federation, maybe you could share it with us and maybe someone would like to join that webinar as well. Michael could do that. Can you do that, Ta uh, Michael? How it is done? Michael is in the other room there. So it's we could, if Michael, you have it, uh, so we could put it in a chat window. And uh, I just want to share with um, everyone. Yes. Michael. I I I would love I would love to have that handy, but it will take me a moment uh, if I can find it. I didn't know I would be called <laughs> upon to do it. So I'm I'm looking I'm I'm working hard at the moment to find it. And you know, I might succeed. <laughs> we can and maybe not. We, we, we can wait for whatever it takes okay. you. Okay. Or can um, it be sent to, uh, via the email? Oh I think I, I I well, can you believe it? I have it. Great. That is a surprise. Okay, so here comes the chat window, and there, and here it is. I send to everybody, I suppose. Yes. Uh, organizers and presenters only. And wait a second. There is a um, function to all. Send. Oh, okay. Where is it? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, Maybe doesn't you give me that opportunity. So I'm going to send it to you, and you can. And you can send it to everyone if I succeed. Yes. So. And uh, Michael, that's going to be the exact time for webinar, the exact time for moon webinar. Yes. Uh, well, the uh, the webinar will start. begin at three three forty five in the morning, in GMT GMT. So that is um, no, just that subtract is five hours. Mm -hmm. Michael, yes. That is broadcast. That is not. Oh, that's the broadcast. Yes, that's the broadcast. Yes, I I thought that's what they meant, the mm -hmm. broadcast. My own webinar starts in about you know twenty minutes, <laughs> but um, <laughs> this you, is for two years have? broadcast. Which mm -hmm. do I have that too? Yeah, do you have that too? <sighs> okay, I'm so sorry. I I should have had. Sorry this for handy. putting so much pressure, um, but oh, pressure is the law of existence. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's just and see. I, I'm just go yes. Okay. Yes, you I'm know going the to pressure. How the ca uh, what is said? Um, how it is said that without the pressure, uh, how it is without pressure, the the call would be not the call would never become as a diamond. Okay. Did, did I say well, here is. Coal would never become the diamond. Yes, 
that yes, I have. I have here. Exactly. Um, so here is the other one uh, which I send, and um, and basically, if you'll just take down the number seven nine two four five eight, and what was the last one? O oh, three two. That and you just go to go to webinar and you put that in and you can join us seven nine two four five eight O oh, three two. Thank you very much, uh, group, Sasha, and all. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Thank you. We'll, sure. we'll keep the uh, window open for another minute that people who's interested could copy the link. And one more time, that's going to be the exact time, uh, the exact full moon time uh, broadcast organized by the uh, Moray yeah. Federation. Led by no, Michael. no, that that is from the Northern Northern Lights Society and Tuya and and the Blue Rose Sisterhood. Tuya will be giving that with music, and uh, it will be a service meditation she'll be giving. Mm -hmm. that, and that will happen in the early hours of the morning GMT. And, three uh, three, three forty five, right? Three forty five GMT. Yes, yes. I, I wrote yes. that. And the second link that we have here is going to be the webinar that will start in twenty min minutes, and that will be webinar led by Michael Robbins. Is that correct? Yes, it's a kind of an right. astrological meditation. Mm. Yes. Right. So we basically meditate and meditate only that, nothing else. That, that's all we do. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you to you. It was wonderful. I, I just better go to my own webinar now. I'll have to sign off, and I appreciate so much all all the all your work. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will sign with you. Okay. Have a wonderful time of the day and great meditation.